Ultimately, the animals have been affected a lot more. You're all still alive. You're still fine. You've just got your feelings hurt. Kind of yeah, thing. this is the a thing that about annoys me as off. well. Like is an article from the Animal Agriculture Alliance. Don't believe everything you see, the truth about undercover videos. Years ago, whenever I saw one of the undercover videos that animal rights groups release, I was sure I was watching tortures of farm animals. My heart would beat like I had finished a marathon and my eyes would sting with fury as I watched the poor animals endure so much pain. At least that's what my naive self thought before I became interested in agriculture and learned the truth. Undercover videos are one of the most powerful tactics that animal rights groups use in an attempt to portray animal abuse on farms. The thing is, the tactic is a lot more unethical than you probably think. I was recently researching exactly how many undercover videos the Alliance had on file that resulted in convictions. I couldn't help but question how much abuse actually happens in agriculture. Then I reminded myself that these activist groups have a specific agenda and they don't care that they are spreading lies to get what they want. Um, I very much care about spreading lies because mm. I don't. I think that lies damage the animal rights movement, mm -hmm. and yeah, everything's bad enough, right? Like yeah, we don't need literally. To, we don't need to exaggerate on on things or do mm -hmm. things because it, it sucks. Mm -hmm. Out of all the eighty-two videos, only six cases resulted in convictions. So the one fact that makes the point that what undercover videos capture is not always animal abuse. It may not always be pretty to the eye of someone outside of agriculture, but it is not abuse. So what they're saying is, out of the 82 videos, only six got convictions because all the rest of the abuse was obviously not standard practice. People in agriculture, anyway, don't see some of the standard practice things as abuse. As abuse. Yeah, yeah. like artificial insemination, there'll be videos of that. That won't be considered abuse. That's just standard practice to ensure that you get your, your dairy cow pregnant. I, li I like this bit as well. Slaughterhouses are a perfect example. When the animal reaches a slaughterhouse, <laughs> they are not meant to live through the process, as I'm sure we can all agree. Yeah, okay. but I, I'm also sure we can all agree that it is abusive to kill someone. <laughs> Yeah, killing, like... killing is bad. Farmers, scientists and industry experts are continuously working to ensure the animal is tra treated as humanely as possible. And I've got that lovely word humane again. Um, for anyone who doesn't know the definition of humane, uh, it actually means to show compassion or benevolence. I would love someone from animal agriculture to describe how um, bolt gunning a cow in the head and then cutting their head off shows any sort of compassion or benevolence. Last month, Mercy for Animals, an animal rights group, posted an undercover video from a chicken processing facility in which they claimed showed horrific animal abuse. An expert panel comprised of a veterinarian, an animal scientist, and an ethicist reviewed the video and said there was no animal abuse. I would, I tried to find what video this was. I couldn't actually find, I looked, I looked around that time and they mm -hmm. had quite a few videos out, so I wasn't entirely sure. But all the ones I saw were, I mean, I would love to know how they didn't claim any of that was at, was animal abuse. Yeah, it would be good to know what video it is. They could have linked that. They could have also named the people who are apparently uh, said that that was not abusive because that would be interesting well, to well, know. Well, they have got one person here, which is uh, Dr. Chuck um, Hoff Hoffaker. He clearly works in the, um, the poultry industry. He's not just a normal vet. Obviously, he's a farm vet like we expected, worked with lots of farms. But I think the, um, the last bit on this page is probably... Uh, the most interesting here. Um, an avid farmer and hunter. Chuck has a special love of fishing, especially Alaskan salmon. Yeah, not the kind of person we should really be looking to, you know, as far as kind of animal welfare is concerned. If I work in the agriculture industry and I'm a true advocate for it, what would the average person who doesn't have the background knowledge to remind themselves think of all this? Um, like, clearly they would think this is fucked up. Because yeah. it because it is because it is fucked up and people yeah. and it, it, what he should be thinking about is if he goes if we go back to that beginning paragraph where it says I used to see all these things and for all oh, those poor animals enduring so much pain and now you've got into agriculture don't you think that maybe since you've been into agriculture you've kind of conditioned yourself to think mm -hmm. this is all okay mm -hmm. maybe your natural thoughts that you had at the beginning uh, were maybe coming from a a more rational place and a, a less mm -hmm. biased place because mm -hmm. you were back then you didn't have any bias you didn't say you were vegetarian or vegan or had any sort of thing before so that just came from a place of compassion and empathy for for animals now you're in this industry then obviously you're going to look at things a different way um and 
it seems like you have just shut off from the practices you, that, that you are doing. Mm-hmm. So, so what all contributes to the making of an undercover video? Animal rights groups get people to apply for a job at a farm or processing facility and act as if they are genuinely interested in the job, but in reality are plotting how they can hurt the company by filming what they see as animal abuse. These workers who are hired do a specific task on the farm, choose to be negligent and film what they think is abuse instead. Sometimes the consequences of them not doing their job or what um, they were hired to do leads to things not getting done properly and animals get hurt all in the name of animal rights. I'd like to see some evidence of that if you're going to make that Mm -hmm. claim. What have investigators Mm -hmm. actually done to cause that to happen? Like, where's, where's the evidence? There's no links within this. That's just a... It's just a baseless claim at the moment. Yeah, and when we look at, like, if there were examples where, say, like, an animal's died, like, in the care of, you know, in the, these people are trying to, like, save them, what's that compared to an industry that perpetually uh, kills, like, billions up to trillions every single year? Like, obviously, you know, like, if you think it's so bad, oh, animals, you know, they, they get hurt, hurt. Like, well, the standard practice hurts animals. Yeah. Like you've made an industry and, and commodified these animals and, and made made a, a thing out of like having them harmed. So you can't even talk. I know. Unbelievable. Why do we never hear from the undercover investigators who worked at the farm? Is it because they find the excuse to disappear months before the video surfaces? Wonder why. Um, probably because if everyone knew who they were, they'd get the shit kicked out of them. They'd get hunted down and they're doing it for their own safety. What would them like disappearing or like being present even change anyway? They've got the footage. They've demonstrated what they saw and what they were were required to participate in. So what would them turning up like change? Like that's what they've got the footage. That's all they need. So is it one thing I bet you didn't realise is that in the case that actual animal abuse does occur, the undercover investigators don't report the incident immediately. Got something definitely to say about this. Nope. They continue to film the abuse for weeks and sometimes even months at a time just to provide the animal rights groups with a PR campaign to further the vegan agenda. If someone really believes they are witnessing animal abuse, they need to report it to the authorities right away than sitting on the footage for a few weeks to produce a catchy video. Now, we've got to think about this realistically. If an uh, undercover person just literally, at the first sign of anything bad happening, instantly blew it up and everything and was like, this is happening. Generally, it will be taken as a one-off incident um, kind of thing. Like, it's really, really hard to get any sort of convictions in, in farming, obviously, which is kind of what was evidence, uh, what's being saying there, because people don't give a shit. There's literally next to no protections for a lot of these animals, and the farming industry is got, uh, meat and dairy industry has got a lot of money behind them, and generally, unless it's super, really, really, really bad, um, n- nothing ever happens. Difficult as that is, it might, you know, being an investigator, seeing constant abuse all the time must be absolutely heartbreaking and to not be able Mm -hmm. to step in and and stop that happening. But if they're able to prove that this isn't a one-off, that this is literally a part of what's going on, a part of the system, this is happening daily, this is something big, then that is what is going to have a result. That is what's going to get a farm closed down or a farm dropped from their suppliers and the public actually interested in what's happening. It's a difficult one. I, I kind of, I see their point in the way that, you know, yeah, I mean, for that animal, it kind of, you know, if someone stepped in, it would help. Like, I, I get that. If a farm's abusing animals and an investigator is watching the abuse, it's not the investigator's fault that's happening. It's that farm, it's that system that they're in, which is which is abusing them. So don't try and place the blame on, oh, but the activists didn't report it. Neither did any of the workers there. Neither did no. the person running the No, in fact, the they were the ones done. abusing even further sometimes. Now, don't get me wrong. In the case that animal abuse actually does happen, it is horrible. And the animal agricultural industry does not condone it by any means. Now, I want to talk about, I want to talk about that, okay? Because I had, okay, so I had a debate once with a, a dairy farmer. So I said that one of the things that really frustrates me about the industry is that the industry itself will never, ever call out its own abusive practices when even when it's you know clear to them that it's an abusive practice it's like clear cruelty people kicking cows or hitting them or you know pigs left the rot whatever you never ever see farmers calling out bad farmers ever which is you know as and you know all they 
You know, the reason they don't, basically, is because they don't want to make their own industry look bad. They don't want to put it on themselves. Like, if they acknowledge that it's abusive to kick a cow and punch them and do these things, then they also have to acknowledge that it's abusive to kill them, to, you know, um, artificially inseminate them and take their babies from them. So I think the reason that they don't critique it, yeah, it makes their industry look bad, but I think they don't critique it because their industry is bad. So, and, and like... How can it be abusive to kick an, kick a subject, but not kill them, confine them, mutilate them and do all these things, take their babies from them? Like either that happens and that's abusive or none of it is. You said something to me like, um, oh, you know, if you want to stop abuse, why don't you, you know, campaign to help farmers um, get CCTV and everything to stop the abuse? And I was like, why don't you do that? I was like, why should why should animal rights activists be raising money for you to keep an eye on your workers and your animals? Mm-hmm. Like, like that's your job as a, an employer. Yeah, like surely, <laughs> like surely if you care. The emotional toll farmers take from the impact the videos have is crucial. It takes a strong connection to animals for farmers to devote their lives to them 24-7, 365 days a year. The, the thing is, right, part of me does feel bad for for farmers. I'm, I'm an empathetic person and I know that not every farmer, I mean, it's a difficult one for you to say so. I mean, let's just get it over. Every farmer is abusing animals, all of them. Okay. But some of mm-hmm. them, some of them are thinking that they're doing it for the best reasons, you know? Yeah. They, there they, are a lot of them who say like, I've seen bad conditions and I know that I would take care of them. So like, I want to be the one to do it. I have had a discussion with a few farmers who are like, yeah, it's like wrong, but I like, I want to make it better. It's like, well, you can't make a bad thing. Like, even if it's better, it's still bad. Like, and you're still doing it. Like, I'm sorry, but you are part of this, this cock. These videos and these exposés affect them. Okay. But ultimately the animals have been affected a lot more. You're all still alive. You're still fine. You've just got your feelings hurt. Kind of yeah, thing. this is the a thing that annoys me as off. well. Like the you know? farmer's feelings always take precedence over the literal lives of other sentient beings. It's just like the, the victimhood of this industry. But yeah, it's always about them and their feelings and not about the animals that like, oh, you care for them 24-7, 365 days a year. What happens after that year? Where are they now? Like that picture right there with that guy with the cow. What happened to her? Yeah. Like, where did you let her go? Like, yeah. and how much did you get for her body? So I just, nah. These videos are not a representative sample of what actually does happen on farms across the United States. Um, what the, what the, this, this, this is the thing, they are. Any time that I went to a farm in the past, it was never because it had been pre-investigated and we knew that it was bad and we were going to go and do anything. It was just because you know, we were intrigued and never been to these places before. And we literally found random farms and went and checked them out. And they're all shitholes. Like if it was that bad, if it was that hard to find places where it wasn't bad, then how, how on earth did I luckily stumble across them every single time I go? Like, am I just very lucky that I just happened to go to, I just happened to be drawn to the ones that are shitholes and, you know, Mm. It's, it's ridiculous. What should people do when another undercover video services? Don't judge a book by its cover or rather a farm by its undercover video. Be realistic and ask yourself if what you're viewing is actual abuse or a humane process that just doesn't look like a bouquet of roses. Can we just pull up the definition of abuse for a second? Use mm-hmm. something to bad effect or for a bad purpose, misuse, treat with cruelty or violence, especially mm-hmm. regularly or repeatedly. The improper use of something. Mm-hmm. A cruel, the cruel so, by the treatment of a person or animal. So any way you spin that, you could you could literally make a case a hundred times for how that would be abusive. I think it's cruel to confine an individual um, and you know have them uh, artif- um, selectively breed them so that you can commodify them further and make more profit of their body. So you've got the in- you've already like in in theory abused them before they've even come into existence because you've got horrible intentions with their bodies and their autonomy and then you know with cruelty like what's more cruel than taking someone's life away from them when they did not consent to it or they weren't an individual who's capable of consenting to it mm-hmm. i'm sorry and what's more violent than killing someone <laughs> like, like, like i just i know yikes it's, it's all abuse uh, it says if you have any questions or concerned of what's happening on farms ask a farmer 
because they definitely won't be biased in any way. Um, I, this is the thing, okay, this is something you've got to remember, okay? And I think this is really important, okay? For a farmer, these animals are their livelihood. They make the money. They mm -hmm. have an active reason to want to defend their actions because if anything happened to their business, they haven't got money anymore. Mm -hmm. Animal rights activists gain fuck all. <laughs> We're ter you know, to, to, yeah. to farmers, you should look at us as terrible business people. We are standing mm -hmm. up for animals that no one gives a shit about. Trying to get Literally. donations for turkeys or something like you no literally have cares. a video on your channel about like crabs <clears throat> like who yeah. cares about crabs except like people who want to pick them up and go nee, nee. yeah do you think I, do you think like, i made a load of money off my crab video huge amounts of donations so everyone's like save the crabs people don't save give a the shit crab. we love the crabs they're so cute I, oh I made that video because I went to a fish market and saw animals suffering and I was like, this is horrible. I want to show people what's going on in the hope that maybe the world will change one day. That's mm -hmm. why I do it. Farmers, you've got have to admit, you have a clear reason to defend what you are doing, which is money. It's a business in the end. You're not running a sanctuary. You are running a business. And those animals you make are part that of your clear business. as well. You when you wanna when you wanna guilt vegans, you're like, this is my livelihood. Yeah. So you are dem you're showing like, your incentive to make it seem good and make us seem bad. Mm -hmm.